All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. My name is Shishul Gupta. I'm the founder and CEO of Startup Lanes. This is the demo day of Kitchen Center. With me, I have Lakshay, who's the founder and CEO of Kitchen Center. And this is an awesome startup. I'll tell you just two lines about it. Why did we choose this particular startup? So uh, generally what happens is, you know, uh, we, we, we are trying to pick up stable startups in, in recent times. Like if you have seen the last one, Zapfresh, Burger Singh, these startups are doing good revenues. Zapfresh was doing almost 70 crore plus. Uh, Burger Singh was doing 84 crore plus. Uh, this is because it gives us uh, and the investors a lot of stability and potential upside instead of taking in less revenue startup, we are focusing on such kind of startups which are stable. And this is one of them, highly stable. They have clocked in 70, 17, 17 crores of revenue so far, as well as uh, the monthly run rate is 1.5 crores. Out of a 12 crore raise, they have already got soft commitments of uh, six crores. And uh, the business model is awesome, obviously, when uh, Lakshay will explain, you will all understand. Thank you for taking the time out for today's call. Uh, this is Lakshay Jain, founder and CEO of Kitchen Center. Uh, I would love to take you over uh, some something about myself, what we've been building, and our plan on a long-term 10-year goal and uh, elaborate uh, collaborate any synergies with startup things. Um, a little bit about myself. Uh, I did my schooling. I did my undergrad from NYU Stern School of Business back in 2013. And that was the time when I got into the startup ecosystem. In 2015, I started my first startup of co-living venture, opened few centers in Manhattan and Brooklyn, uh, scaled it to a point with a real estate developer back in New York, came back to India after selling the business to, to the same developer in 2018. Uh, I think when I came back here in India, I was very intrigued by how Rebel Foods or Cloud Kitchens were building its ecosystem of private brands. I think Cloud Kitchens was a fabulous model back in 2018. Uh, you know, that's when it started at its peak, running multiple brands from the same kitchen. I uh, felt it was revolutionary, right? At the same time, you could run multiple brands from the same space, synergize on the rent, the SKU, the staffs. Uh, following that playbook, you know, we opened a, a private label brands model, took some franchises of a waffle brand, opened a burger and a pizza brand in Delhi and CR. You know, while we were continuing that business, right, we came across certain problems we felt were inherent in the food and beverage industry and certain macro factors that are highlighted in the slide now. Uh, so food services in, uh, industry in India is a $55 billion industry. FMCG is a $60 billion industry as well. But we only really have seen four brands in the food space that are above, say, 1,500 crore in value, compared to that to 60 plus in the FMCG space. And I think the reason for that is, uh, you know, if you're an FMCG product, you have different enablers like contract manufacturers, warehouses that helps you get your product to different cities uh, or to different customers, which means newer revenue. And that allows you to, you know, build a larger business without incurring any capex. Food has always seen a capital glute. If you're a restaurant owner, you know, if you have to enter a new city or a new geography, you would need to spend a certain capex to get the restaurant up and running, wait some time to reach break-even points. So that resulted in not so favorable economics for the food and beverage industry, right? Um, so uh, in India, you know, there is only uh, Domino's Cafe Coffee Date that have more than 500 outlets. In China, that number is close to 50 plus. Uh, so the problem you're very clear is on restaurants been able to expand you know consumer demand also is changes all across the heterogeneous market of the country that is when we thought given my background in real estate co-living that let's solve a larger market problem by providing these plug-and-play infrastructure kitchens for brands that can move in without incurring any capex into different cities or newer geographies uh, that is when we started off with kitchen center we are one of the largest uh, co-working kitchens player, as we call it, or uh, that does the real estate plug and play model. Um, we currently have 50 locations spread out across nine different cities. Uh, every location is typically 3,000 square feet and houses close to seven kitchens in them. Uh, every kitchen standard is 300 square feet. 
uh, every kitchen also can go to one entity that might decide to run multiple brands from the same space. So one of few of our top locations have seen also 20 brands running from the location. Some of our top customers that we have onboarded, of course, initially in our journey, we thought uh, when we started back in 2019 and 2020, that uh, SMBs or startups would be a bigger market. Uh, we went through two layers of uh, COVID, right? And I think we realized that with time um, that uh, we went to two layers of COVID, right? And the enterprise brands or the national accounts believed in the delivery only model and thought that this is here to stay. So across the journey, we've signed uh, Mama Goto, Barbecue Nation, Mainland China, Chayos, Wow Momo, Spivia Cinemas, um, and some local heroes like Big Wong, uh, Masala Story by Punjabi by Nature, Big Game Biryani, who are very prominent in their regions. Some of these brand partners are also working with us in 10 different cities, uh, in 10 different locations across multiple cities. Currently, we are doing a 17 crores of annual run rate uh, and a 70 crores of order, uh, 70 crores of annualized GMV. Uh, we are processing or brand partners are doing close to 100,000 orders a month with a positive contribution margin on the site level. Uh, you know, we, we want brands to be the next dominoes. You know, we want to give a proposition that, uh, you know, we will help brands to reach that 1500 locations mark at a hyper local level without incurring any capex. So we believe potentially, you know, we can, uh, our market is at a 1500 location scale, maybe at a hyper local level, just because we want our brands to reach that potential and benchmark. We went to recruit teams across, which is a co-founding team across different departments. Our sales and growth are headed by ex humans who look after our brand partnerships and the brand growth. Our real estate is headed by ex oyo head for South India Real Estate, which is Sunil, who looks after our developer relationships and getting new properties onboarded. Our business and operations are headed by Tapish, who has a 30-year experience in the IH, from IHM in the hospitality industry across various restaurant groups. To date, uh, we have also raised $1.8 million of equity capital, starting from back in January of 2020. Uh, some of our notable investors are Village Global, um, with some money from Angelist Syndicate, a uh, few super angels like Bharat Pay Founders, uh, uh, and two super angels from abroad. Uh, promoters and management still hold about 70% of uh, equity in the company. So now in terms of extensive range of services that we offer, right? So I think a standard solution, which is the leasing solution that is present is a standard for a small brand and a large enterprise brand, right? Which comes, which is a basically a ready to move in kitchen. Uh, so extraction facilities, ducting, LPG gas connections, uh, basic equipments all, all present in this site. Once brand is onboarded into our ecosystem or once brand moves into our locations, we help them upselling it by providing different services like marketing support, aggregator uh, onboarding. And also sometimes we help them upsell through increasing our take rates by selling them gas or packaging or any raw materials, you know, which we help them source through our vendors. So I believe this has allowed us to sort of increase our defensibility and also increase our take rates beyond a point. Uh, I think what really has worked well for us in terms of our scaling has been the capital night nature of the business. We were always very clear that we did not want to uh, invest in the real estate or building the infrastructure out. Um, you know, and I think that is, uh, and how the economics have shaped up this model compared that to, you know, any co-working or a co-living, they require heavy uh, retail assets as cloud kitchens, you know, customers do not see where the food is coming from. So they could be in a very high dense area, but they could be on a third floor or any asset that has been distressed. Uh, we we try talking to the landlords, convince them to invest about 1,000 rupees a square feet according to our uh, SOPs and our construction layouts. And they come in, uh, put the capex, and then we get the property on boarded. In all our 50 locations, landlords have invested in the real estate in building the kitchen infrastructure for us. We take the property now in two ways. Uh, in our first model, we have a fixed rental of 70 rupees a square feet, uh, which we try monetizing uh, 3x of our lease cost at 200 rupees a square feet. 
this comes in form of a minimum guarantee or a certain revenue sharing whatever is higher out of the two uh, we run the which which we expect the 200 rupees a square feet or, or through revenue share we expect to reach in 6 months to 9 months from operations once brand sales reach at that point in the particular newer region so at the stable level when we run the location at 60 rupees a square feet of operating expenditure which is you know housekeeping salary some in some side security guards some other facilities like power backups we can aim to make a 35% of contribution margin per unit level uh half of our properties do not even have fixed rentals with the landlords of 70 rupees a square feet we are dealing with anywhere around just a revenue sharing that we give to the landlords that allows us to mitigate any lease liabilities and reach break evens in the second month of operations half of properties are only on revenue share with the landlords half of them are on minimum guarantees now in terms of our tech solutions uh, we work with a lot of outside vendors uh, for post inventory management softwares of course a lot of our enterprise brands have that already pre cracked but a newer smb brand we help them connecting with the right brand partner and taking that ahead we after this round we are raising we are going to be creating virtual food courts uh, all across the country that will allow customers to order from multiple brands from the same in the same order so you can put in actually order a wow momo uh, momo a chai us chai a uh, uh, burger sing burger uh, in the same order that will the idea behind that is to uh, give brands another proposition of demand generation through virtual food courts uh in terms of competition or the competitive landscape uh you know i think the entire industry of cloud kitchens moved towards kitchen as a service um you know we do not uh take any licenses or run international brands or do the pnl all of food so which is primarily is the kitchen as a service category we are very clear as a company we want to build the plug and play infrastructure model or the rental business so to speak for cloud kitchens right and see think of it this way if cloud kitchens are a gold mine we are a company that's doing pick and shovels for them real estate will always be in the bottleneck so uh, you know in terms of a direct competition you know we have kitchens plus which is ubers xeo travis kalinix entity that's working in india They're looking at larger real estate uh, maybe looking at the propco angles eventually uh, of course we have kitchens at rebel foods and few other smaller players who are looking to build kitchen as a service vertical they also run their own private brands us as a company where our mode comes from is that we purely focus on the infrastructure bit providing them so and the capital light nature of us has allowed us to scale very quickly and also at the same time have most number of external companies associated with us in the, on our in our locations of course we have some global comparables um, you know we have three unicorns out uh, in the world this kitopi this kitchens united this panda star kitchen uh, there is uh, reef kitchens uh, all unicorns they raised money from some of the top tier one vcs across the globe uh, so i think globally this space as as you some of you could be aware has uh, already reached its its ceiling point Uh, currently we are looking to raise a 10 cr round uh, uh, with that gets us to anywhere around a 80 crore of top lines a 400 crores of gmv that naturally will increase our take rates to 20% with this we aim to touch a 100 location mark almost double our inventory and having 1000 kitchens running from there uh you know primarily 50% of the capital will go towards working capital and operational capital and hiring of hiring of teams across different regions uh you know delhi ncr as a home market still we have a good foothold in terms of operations now we would like to build our other regions and add more locations in uh, you know like hyderabad chennai bangalore pune to consolidate those regions more with both the corporate and the operations bit Uh, as as of course she was mentioning uh, more than half of that is already committed some have already wired Look, so looking to raise another 3 4 crores remaining from the current round so um, you know as as you would see in the first financial year of um, 20 to 21 we did a uh, 3 crores of top line and burnt about 5 crores that was when we were that was the first year of operations we were building the locations out in the financial year of 21 to 22 we did a close to 14 and a half crores of annual revenue uh, burnt about 5 and a, uh, close to 6 and a half to 7 crores uh, our revenues almost grew 400% and our losses almost remain the same 
in the financial year of 23 we are planning to clock a uh, 40 crore of top line uh, reducing our losses to 4 and a half crores by march of 24 uh, we plan plan to reach month on month ebitda break even levels we doing a 80 crore of top line and look to consolidate eventually by financial year 29 with a 500 crore of top line and a 10% ebitda levels uh, our last round of course was done at 9 million pre money this was about 8 months back when we were doing about half the revenues that we are doing currently uh, and currently we are looking to raise the round at uh, about 13.6 or about 100 crore pre money round which and we our revenues have almost grown 2x compared to our last round that we raised at a 60 crore pre money we have our uh, financial analyst to explain the research report and i hope uh, everybody is available so now we can also explain shorya you there so this is the research report for uh, for kitchen center and uh, and uh, you must already be knowing but the uh, business model of uh, kitchen center is basically what they do is they take underutilized properties underutilized real estate uh, which they can get for a low rent and they turn uh, and they turn them around into ready to move in kitchens so uh, these properties have uh, built in uh, uh, built in all of the uh, infrastructure that is required in order to run a kitchen so all of the uh, the uh, the plumbing works the uh, chimneys and everything so uh, these provisions are made and a ready to move in kitchens are made and these kitchens are uh, shared among multiple brands and uh, and that is the business model and this is one part of the business model which is the leasing part apart from this they al- also do a lot of consultancy uh, any online delivery uh, any online platform online brand online food brand they require multiple services leasing and location is one of them the other are tech related services uh, uh, they might need their own app because they want uh, uh, they want customers com- to come directly to their app they might need delivery services for that they need marketing services in order to market their uh, menu and their food products uh they they might need vendor services uh, to source in the raw material so all of these all of these tasks that are required when we set up a new kitchen all of these tasks are handled by uh, kitchen center and the advantage of that is uh, uh is that uh, people who are running the kitchen center the brands they now they can now focus more on the operations and uh, operations and the branding which is which is which is the core of the business and th- that is what will drive people in and uh, they are not bogged down with, with all of these uh, difficulties of uh, uh, tech related problems and uh, the infrastructure problems and everything so uh, so so this, that is the problem and the solution they are providing is a co working space and consultancies uh, right and uh, the disruption in terms of price Uh, is that uh, uh, they can offer this uh, leasing and this marketing services at a lower price than everybody else because they have the advantages of the economy because they're uh, they're servicing multiple brands at a time so they're providing one space to multiple brands and they're providing uh, the tech service to multiple brands so they have the they have advantage over suppliers because they're uh, uh, f- uh, and uh, in terms of uh, in terms of vendors raw material vendors they are sourcing a lot of things in bulk so they can they have advantage over the suppliers and, and they can negotiate in terms of price and that is why and that is how they're disrupting the price and uh, providing everything at a lower cost even after taking a cut from it and in terms of convenience now the uh, brands do not have to uh, Uh, they do not have to go through the hassle of all of this infrastructure work the tech related work and they can focus as i already mentioned they can focus more on the uh, day to day operations the hiring and the uh, and the branding uh, that uh, that they have been striving for uh, the customer the clientele list of uh, kitchen center it consists of uh, uh, cloud kitchen and qsr and it Uh, consists of both uh, smbs which are the new uh, which are the new local player new and upcoming local players and uh, it consists of big brands like pbr 
mainland china chaos and everything so uh, and uh, these uh, and uh, the revenue that comes in through these bands uh, are uh, from these brands are payable uh, like uh, periodically right so it's not a one time payment thing they, they keep on paying the lease they keep on paying for the consultancy services that that is being provided uh, that is being provided by kitchen center so uh, uh, so and in terms of suppliers they source in as i already mentioned they source in a lot of materials uh, uh, at a time they uh, they give a lot of business to their tech vendors and everything so so because of that they have influence over their suppliers and they can Uh, negotiate on the pricing so in terms of the management team uh, uh, there is uh, tapish kreti who is the business head and he deals with problems uh, of the human resources and works towards the growth of the company we have madhur pawar he is the head of growth and he is responsible for uh, process of onboarding the cost management the inventory and and all of this Shubham Gupta is the head of sales, and uh, he's uh, responsible for bringing cl- uh, clients and looking after the client services and and dealing with the whole clientele. Uh, and uh, Mr. Sunil, uh, he heads the real estate and responsible for uh, managing all of the partners of real estate, uh, scouting locations, and uh, and everything related to real estate. The global cloud kitchen model uh, was valued at. 51.96 billion and this was just cloud kitchen model right and it is expected to uh, grow at about 12.4% cagr and this this is source from grand view research the entry barrier for uh, sh- uh, like the shared kitchen space this industry it's not much uh, but uh, kitchen center has a lot of credibility in the market because it's worked worked with so much uh, so many big brands right so it has built a lot of credibility for a new entrant to come and uh, uh, to come in they they have to build this credibility from from scratch and any player will uh, prefer a, any brand any food brand that is uh, that wants to uh, work with a shared kitchen uh, uh, in the shared kitchen space industry will look at a brand that has more credibility and has worked with bigger brands like pvr and uh, mainland china and everything Uh, other than any new entrant that has that has that do not does not have credibility in the market right since since it's a relationship of a sort uh, the relationship goes on for years so credibility becomes really important in this industry okay uh, let's come to scalability uh, so kitchen center works in the franchisee model and we all know that franchisee model model is very scalable uh, big brands like mcdonalds dominos they have been built on this model franchisee model so uh, the uh, so because of this franchisee model the business model becomes very scalable moving into expanding and moving into new cities new countries uh, becomes relatively easier although there is the question of cultural barriers and the thing that they have to expand the operations even then the uh, the franchisee model you get to part you get to network in and you get to partner with uh, various individuals and real estate partners who can provide you all of the networks and get get a hold of the market so the profitability for uh, the company uh, right now uh, the uh, we are burning we will we'll see that in the uh, burn it and uh, as we open more lo- locations right uh, in the same cities and we expand to different cities the top line is uh, expected to increase and uh, and with that the profitability in the coming one or two years uh it we will break even in the coming one or two years and uh, we will become profitable so the profitability is uh, expected to increase in the next two years industry growth prospect so uh, the uh, correlation of uh, shared kitchen model and the cloud kitchen industry uh, that is very high so uh, as the cloud kitchen industry grows the shared kitchen model uh, will also grow uh, so uh, after the covid 19 after the pandemic this cloud kitchen model has really taken off uh, and uh, and has gained popularity and as this uh, and this uh, after this steep increase in the cloud kitchen models as more brands come in the industry and the company top line is uh, expected to increase uh, exit option for uh, investors we have already discussed in subsequent rounds uh, uh, 
there will be VCs coming in, or we may or we may go public through an IPO, or uh, there might be an acquisition. So that that will be an exit option in the coming uh, 12 or 18 months, and thus the uh, overall risk uh, is low as compared. In investment is low as the uh, company has partnered with multiple brands and has several clients, and uh, these clients keep keep on using these services. So so uh, it's an annual, monthly sort of payment that they make, and so the more clients we, uh, clients we add, the more recurring revenue we have, and this gives a steady flow of income for the coming future, and that is why. Uh, uh, we at startup planes think that uh, this is a good investment after a careful analysis. Thank you. That will be all from my side. Thank you, Shorya. Yeah, thanks for sharing this and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, one question I had: uh, I, I see a good growth uh, potential and the progress, uh, but one of the thing that uh, I see, I don't know whether uh, it's a risk or you may be a better person to tell me. Uh, but uh, during the COVID, a lot of properties were available and the, and the landlord would be quite happy to do a revenue sharing or uh, operate without a minimum guarantee. How do you see this going forward uh, post this entire pandemic uh, behind us? Do you see any risk in terms of the rentals going up? Because that would have a direct impact on the profitability. Uh, so have, have you considered that or do you see that happening? Uh, no, uh, uh, excellent, Hari. I think I think that's something that you know we, we internally also were discussing. So, see, I believe that um, you know when we look at uh, different co-working companies as well, right, or co-living companies, uh, which sort of are part of this sharing economies real estate. A lot of them have tied up with large real estate groups, you know, Prestige, TLF, uh, who have come in and done the revenue sharing agreements. Of course, initially in our journey, you know, we also in the first three locations spent our own capital. Uh, we took some properties in minimum guarantees. So I believe uh, if you know we already have a pipeline of landlords. Uh, we get about two leads or three leads a day from our website who want to invest in the infrastructure for us. Landlords particularly are comfortable with revenue sharing more than the developers who have to take a different property on rental because that way the fixed cost also is there. So I believe with time, uh, you know, we will follow a 50-50% mix of properties on minimum guarantees and properties on revenue sharing and tie up with larger uh, real estate groups who's, uh, who have, of course, a good uh, land holding as well in the country uh, and also have their larger risk appetite who potentially can would like to enjoy the upside two years later. Hey, thanks. Thanks a lot. All right. Ranjit? Uh, hi, Captain Ranjit Desai. Actually, I just wanted to know uh, what can we expect out of this uh, investment if we make uh, and what uh, what is the time frame that we are, uh, you are looking up to? Uh, time frame in terms of uh, 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 so he is actually is looking to understand what will be the exit opportunity. Oh, yes, you know, yes. How can yes. he can sell yes. off the shares and make some money? Sure. Yes, so, exactly. Sure. So, 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 so Ranjit, you, you look at this, right? So, uh, we are one of the largest in what we are doing currently um, in, the, in the co-working space, right? So, in the co-working of kitchen space. So, this is sort of a bridge round for us. Uh, in about eight to ten months, we are looking to raise a larger seven to eight million dollar round. And once and that we are looking to raise from institutional capital. And once that happens, we would like to, uh, you know, sort of not clear our cap table, but at the same time, uh, consolidate our cap table a bit more. And I think at okay. that point, that would be done, of course, at a higher valuation. And that is one option that you can, of course, get an exit uh, once an institution comes in and they want to consolidate. And uh, obviously, with time, you know, if we are able to hold some of the investors or some of the investors want to hold, we can look at, uh, you know, public markets in five to seven years from today. Perfectly fine. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me try to explain this in layman's term for others. You know, what happens is generally in angel rounds, angel investors put in a small amount of capital, 2.5 lakh, 5 lakh, 10 lakh, 20 lakhs, sometimes 30 lakhs. And that together they invest and this money is utilized by the startup to scale up the operations. And by this, the valuation jumps because there is a revenue is to valuation multiple, which always works. So if... And there is a dollar return value. 
that means if you put in one dollar the startup might generate ten dollars in valuation or twelve dollars in valuation so accordingly your investments results into higher valuations because of the growth that happened because of the funding and there is two there are two types of valuation pre money and post money so suppose a startup is valued x say 10 crores and it raises 2 crores just with the raise the valuation becomes 12 crores 2 crore more because of 2 crore is added to the growth right that is how this works so once they once the startup completes this particular round even if they close it at 10 crore their valuation will become higher by 10 crores that is called post money valuation and you are getting equity at a pre-money valuation. In next round, they might raise at a valuation of 150 crores, 200 crores or 250 crores. So that time you will be getting an opportunity to sell off your equity to the incoming investors because they have bigger pay packet, they have bigger pockets, deep pockets because they are institutional venture capitalists or maybe some uh, bigger companies, corporations. They get this they give this opportunity to the initial investors who have invested smaller amounts or who want to take an exit uh, captain ranjit if you have any question please feel free to ask about this uh, uh, thank you so much sir. thank you so much now i understood the whole scenario it's very nice of you to explain in a very layman term thank you thank you so much thank you captain okay so uh, Who's asking next? Akhilesh? Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Ranjit, and thank you, Lakshya, for a great presentation. Two questions. One is, uh, I think, repeat, I missed. Uh, one is simple. What at what uh, what valuation, uh, you know, money is, we are raising money now. Second, uh, in terms of like angel or uh, like a small investor, when a person puts money, what kind of visibility uh we would have in you know in the financial statements or in the business of the company that we can maybe uh, there there there'd be some uh, periodic reports that will be shared or uh, you know the financial statements at the end of the year or yeah. like what what kind of uh, you know visibility that we'll have uh, and, and yeah. at what periods that I just wanted to understand. Uh, uh, thank you, Akhil. So we uh, are raising the current round at 100 crores pre-money valuation, which is roughly about 5x of our uh, annual run rate. Uh, in terms of visibility, so we make sure to send out quarterly, monthly uh, updates to our investors. Uh, once Startup Lane joins in on board, uh, we will be doing the same across monthly on a quarterly basis. Uh, his, another question was about the visibility in the cap table, that means uh, whether his name will be depicting. Yes. So that was actually a question for me. This is a direct investment. We are not taking your investment routed through a fund. In fund, generally what happens is fund masks the investors and only one name comes that is of the fund. Plus there is no carry. Carry means when you sell off your equity, fund generally charges 15, 20, 25% something. Plus a success fees is there. So startup lanes does not have this carry option. Your entire money will be credited into your account. The last exits that we have got, uh, I'll tell you about the two exits we have got. So there's a startup called Talent Gum. Two months ago, we raised funds for them. And uh, just after two months, another investor got interested and they said, we are okay to buy the existing equity of your investors they offered 50 percent appreciation in two months and entire money is getting wired directly to the investors there is no success fee no commission no carry nothing similarly experiential etc that returned uh, 50 percent appreciation in six months the same thing happened entire money got wired to the account of the investors there is no cut commission nothing and whatever amount you will be investing is directly going to the startup. We are not charging anything from the investors, no cut commission, carry, nothing. So yeah. that ensures that you, you know the more growth is there for the startup, your entire money is going there and you have a direct relationship, direct relationship, not indirect. You Your name will be reflected in, in their cap table. Cap table is the table of 
it's called capitalization table it's a table wherein the shareholders structure is mentioned who is the shareholder and what percentage how many shares they have so your name will be directly reflecting there all right thank you sure. thank you okay so now we have varun yeah hi uh, hi lakshya uh, great great initiative uh, i had two questions one uh, i i was just going to some of the reading so uh, i think you have you have merged with kitchens act so uh, i just wanted to understand the arrangement i mean when you are raising the money what what sort of involvement kitchens act has in this entire equation sure. and second uh, what's what's your expansion strategy like i mean are you going to focus on the current cities that you are in or are you going to expand into new cities as well what's uh sure. yeah. yes so gotham with uh, riga first regards to kitchens at uh, you know we only had a term sheet with them there was no definitive agreement that we had signed and uh, of course it was contingent on the valuation certain cash exits for the company that uh, kitchens at had to give so that is currently on the back burner uh this currently we are raising the round for kitchen center and we are the plan on building this business ourselves for the next 18 months so that uh is currently on the back burner there is no new development there um uh, of course if there is certain cash components cash exits uh and the right valuation then we might still evaluate but nothing so for the next 12 to 18 months uh and second of all with regards to the cities that we are looking to consolidate so firstly the cities that we are present in uh apart from delhi and cr which is hyderabad chennai bangalore pune uh and kolkata this is where we want to almost uh triple our inventory to 15 to 18 locations how much we have in delhi and cr because that is an apt number to manage operations uh, smoothly and also uh, to make sense of my regional teams higher of in terms of my pnl uh, and i think after couple of quarters we will look to add on bombay so currently we will consolidate the current cities tier one cities outside delhi and then after two quarters look to add on bombay in the portfolio mumbai in the portfolio thank you thank you hello hello <coughs> ah gautam this side yes hi gautam Uh, so just got two questions to you. First sure. of all, uh, uh, is the uh, I joined late, very late. Okay. Can I have a uh, recording of the because you are recording, I presume. Can I have a uh, entire this thing proceedings uh, mailed to me or sent to the? You can share in the WhatsApp group also. Start yeah, that time. will be that will be uploaded at Startup Plains website. Achha. It will stay for she's a few days. She's another thing. Uh, second question. Uh, see. i am presently working if i want to uh, get tied up with this uh, cloud kitchen thing as an uh, this thing will i be getting any opportunity to get tied up with this uh, program in kolkata because i help from kolkata so sure. is there opportunity uh, opportunities with regards to op- uh, are you interested in opening a brand gotham or uh, in terms of what darwaza ban kar salman so uh, because you are going to start up your operations in kolkata okay correct, correct. correct so so we are gotham we are present in two locations in kolkata currently uh, in new town and uh, alipur uh, we are now evaluating if we want to add couple more locations and if we do that in kolkata uh, in the next uh, quarter we will definitely look to add on to all aspects of the team and the business okay okay thanks thanks a lot all right so Hi, um, Lakshay. Uh, hi. Hear? Yes, hi, David. Yes, hi, Lakshay. Thanks for presenting this. Uh, I I wanted to understand what is the role of tech in 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 the technology. I mean, in this space oh. that you're building. And, sure. Uh, that is something I saw which is missing from the slides. Sure. and uh, yeah i think that's i would like to hear more about so so divik i mean you know and this is something we've always contemplated right uh, i personally do not believe in building anything that already is the solutions exist in the market right so for example we started uh, uh, with with pos uh, companies with with building a pos software uh, ims software but what we realized with time that there are already and that is the biggest value add right what tech can give to our external brand partners so we started just working with them on a outsource vendors we did not want to create something of our own technology for some a business like ours can use just to 
uh, 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 strengthen the processes, um, you know, the inward processes, uh, right, through facility management software, through uh, accounting books, rather than uh, technology as a solution to our brand partners. So we are working with outsource vendors for POS inventory management software, so at least we get the data. Uh, and for our processes, yes, we have a technology, uh, although, you know, which is a part of it, we will be looking to make virtual food courts, uh, you know, a direct D2C app eventually going forward, that will sort of uh, come in a marketplace model eventually with time. All right, all right, makes sense, makes sense, thanks, thanks. So essentially, if I understand correctly, then um, Tech, tech is. Uh, I mean, if I if I to if I were to look at it, then yeah. tech is only an enabler for you guys, and essentially for that you are sort of relying on third party vendors rather than building your own. And uh, um, uh, yeah, I think. It's a different business altogether, you know, uh, uh, what we have seen with after discussing with teams, there are companies who've tried building the entire POS systems. Although, yes, maybe say after a larger series A, series B, when we want to own control more of the data, when we'll have more bandwidth to spend there, we would like to do it just to have a direct control over the data, but no plans till that point. Understood. Thanks. Thanks, Lakshya. Sure. Thank you. All right. So who all else has a question? Hey, hi, Lakshya. This is Hari again. Yes, sir. Uh, one question I had. Uh, now, from the fund usage point of view, one of the things, because I just come from a restaurant background, and I feel manpower is one of the most scarce and the precious asset that sure. any uh, restaurant owns, right? Yeah. Are you also planning to use your funds for kitchen automation? Because this becomes a very critical piece for your partner's uh, profitability end of the day. Sure. And a lot of companies in India which are now coming up with uh, kitchen automation solutions. Correct. So are we also Correct. looking at something in this space and using or doing a JV with uh, partners who are working sure. in this space? Sure. So, uh, you know, we, of course, we, so, so, so this is, you know, we like to stay updated into everything new that has been happening in, in the industry. There are, of course, a couple of great companies that are doing automation, robotics. We would like to upgrade uh, certain things in our kitchens that, uh, you know, that helps brands in reducing their utility charges. Uh, that helps, as you correctly mentioned, reducing the manpower as well. So, obviously, like some of these robotic companies are directly interacting with the brand partners as well. We are in now talks how we can facilitate those conversations on a much smoother level of course this Mukunda who is doing superbly well in the space uh, and you know a couple of other companies that are joining in so for us the bigger challenge right now is electricity utilization and parallelly we have started or you know the uh, Mukunda directly facilitating those conversations with the brand where they can find synergies even if they can reduce two people right in their staff salaries that is a good one to two percent saving in this business and that is uh, big in uh, with regards to how paper thin the cloud kitchen margins are. Got it. Thanks. Thanks a lot. You were on the side. I mean, uh, if if no one is asking, can I can I have some follow up questions? Yes, Varun. Okay. So uh, let's say what's what's the split uh, between the SMB and enterprise segment currently in your revenue? Ah, uh, okay. So see, okay, currently in revenue, seventy percent of my revenue is from enterprise brand. Thirty percent is from SMBs. Okay. And when you sign enterprises or SMBs, I mean, what sort of relationship do you have currently? I mean, is this an exclusive that you, that you'll cover all the restaurants in the city or uh, is it on a very transactional basis, depending on the location? So see, we do not have any exclusivity yet with the brand partners. Uh, we, right, we would, right. We would like to strengthen our operations and our, um, and our presence more, you know, we all, although at this at the same time, there are certain cities where uh, we have no competition, you know, Hyderabad, Chennai, Kolkata, uh, Pune to, to a certain extent, right? We, we completely are dominating the market. So that becomes a very natural transition. Although yes, mm -hmm. you know, with more leverage we get in the market with regards to uh, operations are strengthened, are, uh, we have more locations. That is something that we would like to evaluate. But at the same time, I believe that, you know, we cannot uh, hold uh, a gun to a brand shoulder and say, you know, just work with us. We yeah, want, I, yes, I, I understand. That. We want them to willingly work with us. Uh, you know, and I think, and I think uh, more larger we grow, uh, the more uh, smooth operations we run, that naturally can be a uh, trend going forward. 
Okay, and I mean, if let, let's say if we take an example of Wow Momo in sure. in the SMB segment. So currently, how many stores for Wow Momo are you covering? Uh, so currently, Wow Momo is working with us in uh, seventeen kitchens across okay. three different cities. Okay, understood. Thank you. And can you can you name one star customer for you for you in in the SMB and enterprise segment? I think. Uh, uh mama goto or azure which is uh, uh uh you know the the, the very famous res- restaurant group i think that would be uh, like they do great business wherever they open a fabulous company and i think chayos uh, also for us is has been superb uh, in terms of the business they done the, the, the sales they do and in smbs you know we have certain local heroes uh, some top brands in delhi and cr like big gain biryani uh, big wong who have expanded into different cities with us and who have always done well in whatever city they have opened okay cool. thanks alex just a follow up question on the same uh, thing do you see a bit a percentage difference between smb and enterprise like smb operates at a much higher rep, a bit a percentage compared to an enterprise No, I think I think if anything, it would be the Hello. other way round. Uh, the, the the profitability for an enterprise, I do believe, because you know they have certain processes in place, basically, which, which helps them reduce their cost and run a more profitable businesses. You know, of course, they are running this business at scale over multiple locations. right so i think uh, enterprise brands or uh, brands who have multi outlets across multi cities will still have a larger ebitda percentage than a unorganized smb working in only one or two locations got it so i left rajiv aside hi rajiv yeah i have a question like uh, uh, are brands using your kitchens only for the uh, delivery purposes or they are using for their physical outlets also Uh, only delivery right now. Um, in couple of years, we would like to explore offline presence. Um, you know, as as some of you could be aware that, uh, you know, Rebel, Cure Foods, all have started uh, to move offline. Right. Uh, also, a presence. So when you are running a cloud kitchen brand, and if you have a certain offline presence, you are dealing with fabulous customer acquisition costs. Uh, customer acquisition costs get split across those two channels, and you can chase higher margins. So yes, we would also like to give our brand partners the option to have uh, airports or virtual food co- or food courts in the malls. So currently, only uh, delivery only. But by twelve to eighteen months, we would like to explore offline channels like airports and food courts in malls. Uh, hi, Laksh. Just one question. Uh, I mean, uh, taking a cue from uh, the last one, which what we have discussed uh, right now no. regarding the offline kitchen. Yeah. So when just uh, i'm a very new uh, person to understand any business so when you say offline uh, stores yeah. it, it it means that you will have multiple brands in that food court it is something like that correct correct retail yes so uh, uh, so, so so and i think the navin just the right, right have you see, you see virtual food court right and most of the brands that are working with us are already present in those food courts so what that allows and we want to be one stop solution for all these brand partners needs um, be it cloud kitchens be it offline as well because that is one way we also can increase our defensibility and a proposition to them so okay. uh, going forward a mix of retail see even 20 30% of retail we can do right i think that would be a fabulous proposition in terms of margins for the brand partners and also right. for us as a company yes and now what we are offering the cloud kitchen is uh, one cloud kitchen for one brand as of now uh, so currently for example one location would be uh, some of you could have missed this as well initially so one location typically of ours is 3000 square feet uh, in the 3000 square feet location we have 6 to 7 kitchens of 300 square feet each uh, now 300 square feet of one kitchen which is a separate unit is okay, taken okay i understood Yeah, one, yeah, one by one, one by Chaiyu. Mm-hmm. Got it. Then we can offer two multiple, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Lux, this is Harish. A great presentation and wonderful time. Um, Thank you. The question is regarding the food aggregators. Like uh, they are doubling down on the kitchen, uh, on the cloud kitchens already. And why would the brands work with you other than food aggregators? I mean, what are the value proposition are you offering them to the brands? 
so so hadish you know uh, of course we uh, across in in 2020 right uh, we we took some kitchens from zomato as well and uh, when they were exiting the business so aggregators as of now have taken a little step back uh, in terms of uh, the cloud kitchens uh, and it is open more for private players like us uh, of course we had entire things like in conflict with their brand partners conflict with their internal own brands uh, exclusivity that the kitchens that they're asking so i think uh, uh, we've seen aggregators fall back a bit on cloud kitchens for the time being uh, and for last couple of years uh, they might come again later onwards not too sure about that but right for the time being it's the market is fully open for private players to come in and take it that take the market share at least uh my apologies if i miss that uh, but uh, want to understand what is the moat of the business uh, if not uh, right now what would be the plan to build a formidable moat sure uh yes so uh, i i personally do believe right in this sort of businesses with scale uh, adds on to your defensibility um and i think the larger we grow as a company with regards to our footprint uh, our country penetration and a potential we want to be the company that helps brands to be that 1500 locations mark right so i think in these sort of businesses scale firstly adds on to your biggest defensibility and the second thing that we are very aggressively working on is increasing our value added services uh, which is as shore also rightly said like marketing support consulting services or using our economies of scale with the vendors to get a uh, better rates for our brand partners at least in certain categories like like cylinders or packaging that itself is 10% take rates so i believe apart from the infrastructure if we um, consolidate on a value added services in a way that we help brands run a more profitable businesses uh, that is how the second layer of defensibility comes so scale value added services are two of the strongest ways we can add on to that great thanks our uh, second one is on uh, major you know competition and what's current market share sure so uh, in terms of the competition in terms of direct competition uh, we have kitchen plus uh, uh, speed kitchens who are probably working at 5 to 7 8 locations mark of course we have the most number of selling points uh, in the country uh, with it with and most cities covered with regards to the plug and play infrastructure model uh, we have some indirect competition with regards to the cloud kitchen business overall with rebel kitchens at uh, kitchens which uh, are doing more uh, they are running the brands they are running the licenses of the brands uh, so i think that is how the, the competition of course is spread up we are the largest with regards to the most number of unique companies on boarded with us and us having the most uh, footprint across the most number of locations great uh, thanks uh, one question on uh, hygiene and food safety uh, whether that can be a real moat and uh, if tomorrow that sure. if i know my next order is going to come from a kitchen center uh, you know a uh, place which is uh, yeah. you know uh, rated high on these factors can sure. that that be a differentiation segregation and slightly off track question is you know in such locations how do they take care of uh, you know contamination and uh, you know whether veg and non veg orders are really segregated or it is all sure. <laughs> on the label sure. uh, so you, you know uh, uh uh i i'll answer the second part first uh, and then i'll get to the first part so um of course free food safety getting the best food out is uh food hygiene is more of brand's responsibility right we do not get into the cooking of brand partners that's a different beast in altogether to conquer so obviously we have some great brands who have a great expertise in that uh although that being said uh, what you said first right is i think that could be a really good moat if we can find a way uh, that uh, you know kitchen center locations have the biggest hygiene and that's what we tried in covid also uh, you know to make sure there are certain aspects of the hygiene that we can do more than a brand partner can do stand alone uh, i think with time we have to find ways uh, the right ways to get that message out so i think uh, uh, of course apart from what we do how we strengthen our on ground operations is one part and how we get that message out across to our final consumers in the most uh, cost effective way not burning money on marketing or not burning money there i think that is one piece that we are still trying to figure out how to crack but i think it's spot on what you said uh, if we crack that right we i think that will add on a great layer of defensibility to us uh 
thanks. Uh, what, I mean, uh, related note, I mean, how do we take care of uh, this FSSI? And uh, if at all, there is some, you know, complaint from a particular brand. Uh, since it's a common infrastructure, uh, yeah. like one of the biggest risks, right? I mean, food contamination, where you have no control, they have brought their own raw material and something yeah. happens. So how do you address these concerns? And in terms of FSI audit and all those things, whether it will be treated as a one entity or it will be treated as a, I mean, like a sublease and that only that portion will be audited. How does it work? So, uh, you, you know, as I, as I was uh, uh, mentioning, we do not uh, get into the FASAI licenses or the food preparations of the brand. Uh, the agreement say that is solely brand's responsibility. Uh, you know, we try to take care of our parts like pest control. Uh, like We like to do our things, which are in our scope of work. But in terms of liability, the food contamination, FASAI, the quality of food, uh, veg, non-veg, that all is brand's responsibility. And that is something so that... Uh, so legally or otherwise also uh, it's completely on their own uh, there is no uh, okay okay on the on okay uh, one question on that uh, service provider you mentioned like uh, consulting raw material under multiple other services which you provide uh, whether it's a microsoft model or it's a linux model whether it is an open source whether they have liberty to choose their suppliers or 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 you yes, they have liberty. It, like they okay. have liberty to choose the suppliers and uh, see as long as i'm giving them better product at a cheaper price uh, yeah. uh, you know i don't expect them to choose from us so right now we are choosing commodities right. like packaging or gas cylinders that helps them source it at cheaper rates okay. and it's easier to control that for us with right. time we will add on categories uh, but mm -hmm. very, like very slowly and very carefully of what categories we decide to go into sure so it is up to up to them ultimately to go with a particular Absolutely. service or not. Uh, right, and suppose cylinders, right? I have we we have we get a great discount from the Indian oil company, and that is something that they still prefer because right. the discount rates are matchable. So I think right. um, uh, the, the more scale we grow, the more negotiating power we'll build onto the vendors, and more categories like poultry, protein, we can still uh, add on to the business. Right. Uh, last question from my side: uh, whether you know you you have any plans to start your own brand and if at all you want to start whether there is any non-compete clause we we do not have non-compete clause um you know that's it's it's uh, for the next 18 months we are solely focused on building uh 200 locations um uh, you know and i believe that once we have captured the supply uh, or the real estate it will be very easy to plug into it. Uh, we, of course, don't have any non-competes. Uh, but mm -hmm. for the next 18 months, we want to solely just focus on building the real estate more and the supply strongly. Okay. Okay. So it's about the focus, but in case you want to do, go that path, there is no restriction as such. None. None. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lakshya. Hi, Lakshya. One question from my side. This is regarding the location. So how sure. do you decide on the location? Yes, uh, I, I so, you have data from your. Yeah, so 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 Harish, we uh, you know we have a pipeline of two hundred locations, right? Which we piggyback some data from Zomato, Swiggy, some from our brand partners, where we see the most GMV coming from what particular location in what cuisine. We see if a Chinese at a high EOV is doing well in Hyderabad, Kukatpalli or a Kondapur uh, or uh, a low EOV Chinese doing well in a certain areas of Delhi or uh, Bangalore from our brand partners, we try to pass that information off to the new brand that's signing in. We have 200 locations. Firstly, we're focused on um, you have 200 locations identified that does the most GMV in the five kilometer radius across the country, right? So a first target is to capture those locations. We have that already. And then slowly we, and during those 200 locations, we try to get more intelligence. A larger Asian AOV brand will work or a cheaper AOV Asian brand will work in what particular area. That is an extra layer of intelligence, which our history or our data we've captured in two years helps the brand partners with. Okay, so if I understand it right, so you get this data from your brand partners. Or brand you partners the data and, of course, brand partners. Uh, and of course, right, the history of, of, of what uh, has been ordered, what has not been, what has not been working. Zomato, Swiggy's data account, uh, that also we piggyback from where which we see what is the most dense orders has been. Uh, what area is doing the most number of orders? 
So yes. will you also have access to Zomato or Swiggy's I mean, food aggregators data, like from the location, like where exactly is the order going? Or in, in, just... in some aspects, when we have certain brands uh, working in certain areas, we do, but we already have a list of 200 locations uh, which do the most GMV in terms of the entire online ordering, both Zomato and Swiggy. What kind of uh, agreement, whether it's a revenue share or it's like a you know fixed price for the uh, places you you know lease. Uh, from the brand or from the landlord? Both, both ways, both ways. So, uh, fifty percent with the landlord, fifty percent locations are fixed rentals, fifty percent okay. are only revenue sharing. Uh, okay. with, with brand partners, in ninety percent situations, is both minimum guarantee or revenue sharing, whatever. Okay. 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 All right. Thanks. I wanted to ask a question that uh, each brand sets up its own uh, cubicle, its own corner there in the whole infra setup uh, given by you? Uh, so we, we, we already set up the cubicles, the locations, the basic equipment that is, that is there. The brands get equipments that is more pertinent, custom equipment that is more pertinent to their cuisine categories. Rest, everything is done by us. All the cubicle, all the setup of infrastructure, the ducting, the basic equipment, the basic gas points. They just get the custom equipment, the sh staff, and the raw material and start operations. So, uh, what is the uh, unit size? I mean that uh, I mean you do you have some units, okay, hundred square feet, fifty square feet, or one brand has that, that one entity has a unit of three hundred square feet. That is standard across most of the locations. And about we have seven units of that in one location. Okay, so if if a brand is big and they want, they can add take two units or three units. Correct, right? correct, correct. So the uh, the uh, sanctity of the brand and the product and no no mixing of each other and all that that stays with the brand itself. Yes, and you know, uh, and all our units are partitioned with no brands can see where what the other brand is doing or the, there's no pilferage and that has never happened in the centers where there's been a cross brand pilferage or a cross recipe pilferage and they all are separated into separate units with, with, with thick walls. So, um, so, so that has not been a problem. So each one is a lockable uh, independent correct. separate unit. Correct, correct. All right. I think uh, Lakshya has answered all the questions very nicely. So thank you so much, everyone. And thanks, Lakshya, for joining in. Uh, let me share the process. A commitment form will be uploaded at the same link where you have got the joining link from. And then you can go through it carefully and commit. There, thereafter, you can receive the pitch deck, valuation, projection, whatever documents you require. So our process has first the commitment comes up. It is a soft commitment, not a binding commitment. Then only after verification of the investor, we send the documents. So once you receive the documents, then you can uh, have a one-on-one -on -one or maybe a group discussion with the founder in case you require. Generally, most of the investors, they just wire uh, the funds after term sheet and SHA. In case any question answers are required, we will connect you with the founders again. Thereafter, the term sheet, shareholders agreement, and then you transfer the fund. Generally, the entire process will take uh, typically one to two weeks maximum, and then we close the round. All right, so that was about it. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Take care, stay blessed. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shishis.